Hello everyone, I am Vipin Kumar and I welcome you all to the most comprehensive preparation platform for GATE and ESC by Juice exam prep. Now in this concept capsule session, we are going to talk about how to identify the phase when temperature and pressure is given to you. Okay, so let us start with some basics. Now, what do we have? We have a container in which there is some water which is at 30 degrees Celsius. Okay, now this water is at atmosph atmospheric pressure, right? And we want to convert this water which is at 30 degrees Celsius to vapor which is at 150 degrees Celsius. So what do we do? We will start giving it heat, right? Now tell me, is the pressure changing? No, pressure is always atmospheric. Okay, all this is happening at a constant pressure which is atmospheric pressure. Okay. Now this phenomena, this conversion of water at 30 degrees Celsius to what, uh, vapor at 150 degrees Celsius can be shown on a phase diagram. So phase diagram, phase diagram we can show. Now what is phase diagram? Phase diagram gives you the relationship between pressure and temperature during a phase change. Okay, it gives you the relationship between pressure and temperature during a phase change. How does it look like? It looks like this this is how pressure and temperature varies okay this is called as saturation curve on the left side we have liquid on the right side we have vapor okay now let's try to show this on this diagram so what do we have we have water at atmospheric pressure now pressure remains constant right so first of all atmospheric pressure let me mark so here p is equals to 1 atmosphere pressure is equals to one atmosphere so when pressure is constant let me extend this as a horizontal line now what do i have i have water at 30 degree celsius okay so let's say this is 30 degree celsius and if i extend this line this is my state of system now what is this this comes on the left side of the curve that means it that means it's liquid okay now i am giving heat okay so its temperature is going to increase so temperature will increase in this direction and when i continuously give heat it will reach to its reach to 100 degrees celsius reach to 100 degrees celsius now if i extend this line what will i get i will it will merge at this curve the pressure and temperature line merge at this curve okay at the saturation curve so and this at atmospheric pressure 100 at 100 degree celsius water will convert into vapor and this is called as the boiling point of water or the saturation temperature boiling point or saturation temperature okay now i am still giving it heat i am still giving it heat so its temperature will further increase to 150 degree celsius okay so now when i extend this I will reach at this point. Now this is the right side of the curve. That means it is vapor. Okay. So what do I know? This point one is liquid. So when, so when the pressure is one atmospheric and temperature is thirty degree Celsius, uh, water exists. Water is liquid form, right? And when the temperature when the temperature is one fifty degree Celsius and pressure is atmospheric, the fluid is in vapor form. Okay. Water converts into vapor. So this is point three is vapor, but what about point two? When I talk about point two, I can say I had water at hundred degree Celsius, and I had vapor at hundred degree Celsius. So what? If I only look at this diagram, I can say that water is instantaneously converted into vapor at the fixed temperature, which is saturation temperature hundred degree Celsius. But this is now it happens. This is not how it happens. So how does it happen? Okay, it happens like this. Okay, what do I have? I have water which is at thirty degree Celsius. Water which is at thirty degree Celsius. Now I am giving it some heat. I am giving it some heat. So when I give some heat to water, its temperature is going to increase as I have seen earlier, and it will reach. To the boiling point of water or the saturation temperature okay 
This is saturation temperature. Okay, so when I am giving heat, water at 30 degree Celsius is converted into water at 100 degree Celsius. Okay, only temperature is changing, temperature is increasing and when, temp when the heat is transferred to change the temperature, it is called as sensible heat. So this Q is equals to sensible heat. Also, if the fluid is at temperature lower than the saturation temperature, it is called as subcooled liquid. It is called as subcooled condition or subcooled liquid. And when the temp temperature reaches to the satur saturation temperature, it is called as saturated liquid. Okay. So water which was at 30 degree Celsius absorbed subsensible heat and converted into water at 100 degree Celsius. Now I am still giving heat. I am still giving heat, okay? So when I am still giving heat, the water that is at 100 degree Celsius will start vaporizing. Water will start converting into vapor, okay? So slowly the amount of vapor will start increasing, the amount of water will start decreasing and it will happen at the same temperature, at the saturation temperature only. Temperature is not going to increase, okay? Only water is converted into vapor and it, it will happen till then the whole water is converted into vapor, okay? So water at 100 degree Celsius will convert into vapor at 100 degree Celsius. Temperature is not changing, only phase is changing. And when you give heat at constant temperature to change phase, it is called as latent heat. It is called as latent heat. So this heat is latent heat and it will convert water into vapor at 100 degrees Celsius. Now vapor is also at saturation temperature. So I can call it at saturated vapor. Saturated vapor. Okay. So now all the water is converted into vapor and it is at 100 degrees Celsius. Okay all the water is converted into vapor at 100 degrees Celsius. I am still giving heat. I am still giving heat. I, have, I did not stop. I am still giving heat. Now what will happen? Now the phase is being, has changed already. Now the temperature of vapor will start increasing and it will reach to vapor at 150 degrees Celsius. Now here the phase is not changing but the temperature is changing. So the heat that will be absorbed will be called as sensible heat sensible heat okay and because the temperature is more than saturation temperature this is called as superheated superheated vapor okay so this is how water which is at 30 degree celsius is converted into vapor which is at 150 degree celsius okay now we all know the TS and PV diagram of phase change, isn't it? Okay, so what happens? What happens? This is how a TS and PV diagram looks like, okay? So this is our condition first. This is our first condition and I can say uh, on a TS diagram, this curve is at constant pressure. So P1 is equals to P atmospheric. P1 is equals to P atmospheric. Temperature is 30 degrees Celsius, okay? So let's say this is temperature is equals to 30 degree Celsius. Now what I am doing? I am giving heat. I have water at 30 degree Celsius and I am giving heat. So its temperature is going to increase. So this is 0.1. And I am giving heat to this point. This is 0.2. And the temperature will increase to T saturation which is 100 degree Celsius and the heat that I am giving here is sensible heat okay so now I have reached at point 2 and this point 2 it is saturated liquid okay now what I am doing I am still giving heat so slowly the amount of water will start converting into vapor and as I am going in this direction, the amount of vapor is increasing, the amount of water is decreasing and I'll reach at point 0.3 here. This is point 0.3. 
which is saturated vapor at 100 degree Celsius. Point 3 is saturated vapor at 100 degree Celsius. The heat that I have given here is latent heat. If I am further giving heat, then my temperature will start increasing and I will have this is T is equals to 150 degree Celsius. 150 degree Celsius. Now, this is point four. Superheated vapor at 150 degree Celsius. Okay. And this side, this left side, of, this is called as vapor dome. Okay. This is called as vapor dome. Left side of vapor dome, we call it subcooled region. Subcooled region. Right side of vapor dome, we call it as superheated region. We call it as superheated region. And in between the vapor dome, we call it as wet region. So here, we have a mix of liquid and vapor. In the left side, we have just liquid. In the right side, we have just vapor. But in between, we have liquid and vapor. Okay, this can be shown on TS diagram. Also, we also know PV diagram, right? So this side we have subcooled region. This side we have superheated region. And this side it's wet region. Okay? So this is about the basics. Now let's come to the main point. How to identify the phase? Okay? So let's see. What do, we, what, what do you know? You know pressure, okay? In the question, they have given you a pressure. Okay? So let's say P1 is given to you. By this P1, you will know what is the T saturation temperature. T saturation. Okay. Okay. So, you will mark this T saturation on the TS diagram. You will mark this T saturation on the TS diagram. Okay. Now, they have given you a certain temperature. They have given you a fluid is working at this pressure and this temperature. So, you will see this pressure and you will find out what is its saturation temperature and you mark this point. Okay. Now you see that the temperature that is given to you is let's say this temperature Ta. Okay. Now if the temperature is less, if the temperature is less than the T saturation, so what will you do? If the temperature is less than T saturation, so when you go on this curve, When you go on this and it will meet this line, meet this isobar, meet this constant pressure line at point A. Okay. So what will you know? Where is this point? Where is this intersection lining? It is in subcooled region. It is in subcooled region. So what is the state? What is the state? It is liquid, subcooled liquid. Okay. Now, so, if the temperature is less than T saturation, the state is subcooled or compressed liquid. If the temperature is equals to T saturation, if the temperature that is given to you is equals to T saturation, then it will be in the wet region. It will be somewhere inside. It will be in this region. Okay. And what is the quantity of vapor and liquid can be find out by dryness fraction. Okay. Now, if the temperature is more than T saturation, if the temperature is more than T saturation, then you go on this line and where it intersect at this point, you will see in what region it is. So, this is superheated vapor, superheated vapor. Okay. Again, you will be given that a fluid is at P1 and T1. Now, first you will find out what is the T saturation at this pressure. Now, you will see if this T1, if this T1, if it is less than T saturation, then it is compressed liquid. If this T is equal to T saturation, then it is wet region. If this T1 is greater than T saturation, then it is superheated region. Now, this diagram can also be, this is a TS diagram, right? This diagram can also be replaced by TV diagram. 
specific volume same diagram okay and the same thing you can see that you know what is this this is vf is a specific volume of saturated liquid and vg is a specific volume of saturated vapor okay now they have given you a volume they have given you a volume and vf and vg are actually known to you okay you can find out at this pressure and temperature what is vf and vg okay now if the specific volume given to you is less than vf if it is less than vf then what do you have you have compressed liquid if this specific volume that is given to you is between vf and vg then you are in wet region and if the specific volume that is given to you is greater than vg then it is superheated vapor then it is superheated vapor okay so at a given pressure and temperature if volume is given to you then you can find out what is the state of the what is the phase of the fluid okay same thing you can do by pv diagram pv diagram okay now here this line is isothermal okay here temperature isotherm here temperature is constant here temperature is constant now you have given a temperature you have given a temperature at this temp you have given a fluid exist a fluid is at t1 and p1 and this diagram is given to you now what will you do you know t1 you will find out its p saturation you will find out its p saturation okay now if this p1 if this p1 is greater than p saturation if this p1 is greater than p saturation okay p a is greater than p saturation and i extend this line and it intersect here and this intersection lies in the subcooled region okay so if p is greater than p saturation the phase is compressed liquid if this p is equal to p saturation so this is p is equals to p saturation and this will intersect at this point or it can exist anywhere here so you are in the wet region you are in the wet region and if pressure is less than p saturation which is pb so i extend this line here and it intersect at this point the intersection lies in superheated region superheated region so therefore we have superheated vapor the same thing i can do with volume okay so what do, what, what do we have if v is less than vf so this is vf this is vg if the v specific volume is less than vf then it is subcooled liquid if v lies between vf and vg then it is wet region then it is wet region it is wet region and if v is greater than vg then we have superheated vapor then we have superheated vapor okay so this is how if the pressure and temperature is known to you this is how you can find out what is the phase of the fluid what is the state of the fluid okay so let's see some quick questions very quick questions and gate questions so you will see how you know how useful these conclusions are okay which one of the following statement is correct for a superheated vapor which one of the uh, following statement is correct for a superheated vapor and this is the gate 2018 question okay first option is first of all let's conclude uh, you know let's look at our conclusions so what what are they saying its pressure is less than the saturation pressure at a given temperature okay so if the temperature is same you see we have concluded at a given we what what have we concluded at a given temperature if the temperature is fixed if p is greater 
then P saturation, then it is subcooled liquid. If P is equals to P saturation, it is saturated. And if P is less than P saturation, then it is superheated vapor, liquid and vapor. We have also concluded one more thing, what? If the pressure is fixed, if the pressure is fixed, then I would look at temperature. Then I would look at temperature. Okay. So if the temperature is less than T saturation, we have subcooled liquid. If temperature is equals to T saturation, we have saturated and temperature is greater than T saturation means we have superheated vapor. These are my conclusions. Okay. Now, now re let's read the statement. Its pressure is less than the saturation pressure at a given temperature. So I am talking about given temperature. So its pressure is less, pressure is less than P saturation, this condition. And it gives you superheated vapor. So this is correct. They are asking the condition for superheated vapor. So this one is correct. Let's see the second option. Its temperature is less than the saturation temperature at a given pressure. Now the condition is for given pressure. So I have to look at this one. At a given pressure, temperature is less than T saturation. Temperature is less than T saturation. But it shows subcooled liquid. They are asking for superheated vapor. So no, this is not correct. The ice directly convert from solid phase to vapor phase. This is also not correct. This is called as triple point. Saturated liquid and saturated vapor states are identical. This is also not correct. This is called as critical point. Okay. The option A is correct. Option A is correct. Just by knowing the conclusions, in one second you can find this answer. Okay. You can find this answer. So the pressure, this is P saturation. And the when the pressure is less than P saturation, this intersection line in the superheated region superheated vapor. Okay. So you see just by the conclusion you can solve just one second question maximum two seconds. Okay. What about this question? This is also gate 2014 question. You see if you understand the conclusions this is only one second question. Okay. We have a rigid container of volume. The specific vol uh, uh, volume is given as 0 0.5 meter cube. Okay contains 1 kg of water, contains 1 kg of water at 120 degrees Celsius. At, so temperature is known to us. Temperature is known to us. And they are saying its VF and VG is known. The state of the water is. State of the water is. Now what do I know? At a given temperature, at a given temperature, if volume is less then Vf, then it is called as subcooled liquid. When V lies between Vf and Vg, it is saturated or in wet region. It is in wet region. And when specific volume is greater than Vg, it is superheated region. This is my conclusions. Okay. Now let's see. This is V. This is capital V. Okay. Volume 0 0.5 meter cube. Meter cube. Okay. So I have given per kg. Per kg I have given. And how much is the mass? 1 kg of water. 1 kg of water. Okay. So I can see that my specific, so I can find out small v is equals to 0 0.5 by 1 is equals to meter cube per kg. This is a specific volume is also 0 0.5. Okay. Now, this is the specific volume that is given. And I'll check my condition. So, this specific volume is basically 
V is greater than Vf, isn't it? And this V is less than Vg. So what is the condition? Second condition. This is my condition. This specific volume lies between Vf and Vg. And if it lies between Vf and Vg, what do we have? We have a mixed, we have a, we have a wet region. It is liquid plus mixture, okay? So compressed liquid, no. Compressed liquid, we have first condition. Saturated liquid, no. Okay, saturated liquid is Vf. Superheated region is this condition. But the condition that is true here is this one, second condition. So this is our correct answer. Okay, our specific volume lies between Vf and Vg and therefore the state is in wet region, mixed region. Okay, so this is how you can find out what is the phase or what is the state of your fluid during phase change by knowing its temperature, pressure and specific volume. Okay, so you have to understand the conclusions and you should, you should understand it and then you know, like these questions will be very, very easy for you. It's very easy. You see, this is, these are gate questions. It should not take more than two or three seconds to answer these questions, okay? So, uh, thank you very much.